Right, fantastic. Um, welcome everyone. I see quite a number of people are already have already joined the room. Um, today in Gauteng Anthropology, um, in, um, sorry, the, universe, the Department of Anthropology and Development Studies at the University of Johannesburg in partnership with Gauteng Anthropology is pleased to host award-winning um, art practitioner, uh, Wesley Mkibe, who is going to be in conversation with us on the topic of there is love in this house, displacement, memory, love, and dignity. Um, and so we're likely going to speak for about 20 minutes to 30 minutes, and then we're gonna open to the floor uh, for discussion. And how I've done this, um, how I've prepared for this talk was to do a number of thematic um, areas that I wanted to focus on that I think a lot of uh, Wesley's work touches on. And I think the first one is really around your own personal background and, and, and the link between the personal and the kinds of art that you produce. So a lot of the times when you read or you Google, Google um, Wesley, um, a number of things come up. Um, issues of the, not issues, sorry, um, the words you hear the most is uh, contemporary dance, um, how your work is influenced by jazz, how it's influenced by Afrofusion, <laughs> sorry. Um, so I wanted you to just share with me um, a little bit about your own personal background and how that influences um, um, your, your work and your art. Oh, yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wizi Lem Kibe. Um, yeah, that's true. Some of the things that have been said there, I guess. Uh, yeah, I studied in that background of uh, um, of the contemporary movements, yeah, and dance. Uh, it was not particularly something that I, I'll say I wanted to study in. It's just the reality and things that we face. You just have to find a way where can one can go. But I fell in love with it. Yes, with the jazz, I started there. And then I was mostly influenced by whole theater spaces and all that. Yeah, I just loved it. I think that's where the whole base of the performance art started. It's just learning all those aspects. And then um, I think right through, I managed to get a residency in performing arts and site specific. That's when like create work in the pub of William. And that was like more interesting for me because it was like, oh, actually, I think this is where I wanted to be. <laughs> but at that time, I didn't have an access to that place. I just had to use the opportunity that I have. So um, yeah, those are my um, base. Uh, I come from a musical theater background, trained in contemporary jazz and all that. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I so the other I think that, that, pardon? I know I'm saying I just hope that sums up the whole introduction. <laughs> no, it does. Um, but I think the other word that also comes up a lot whenever you look up you look up your work is the is the word of is, is interdisciplinarity, right? Um, so you work across film, performance, installation. Um, and why is it important for you that you not, for instance, focus, for instance, on performance, or why don't you focus on um, films alone? Um, why is it important for you to work across these particular mediums? I think for me, it was a, it was access that I never had. Maybe it was a one narrow access. So in my work, I was trying to create a lot of angles and of course, um, the audience engagement, see work in different ways and work can be interpreted in a different ways. And of course we create work. Okay, I create work to further uh, conversations. So using different mediums and tools that helps the work be timeless and creates further conversation and audience can look at it in a very um, foreign angle, which is very interesting, you know. And it's also training us as human beings to just have less expectations and just coming up with an open space when we see work and engage with work, you know. So that, that was very exciting for me because some of the mediums I came across them few years back, like four years back and all that, and true residences, which was much, um, I enjoyed it because every experience was kind of new for me. So um, interdisciplinary new mediums and all that, it just gives me more endless possibilities to create work. Fantastic. Um, and I think the other interesting thing that sort of on this theme of your background is that you come from um, Gabeja, which is now, well, Port Elizabeth, which is now Gabeja. 
Um, and a lot of the time when we think about arts um, in South Africa, they're always located in the metropolis, right? So it's either Johannesburg or Cape Town. And, and what has your journey been like um, as, as someone coming from, quote unquote, not one of the, quote unquote, arts centers of South Africa? And how, what, what was your introduction to the arts, um, particularly coming from, from Port Elizabeth or, or Kabeha? <laughs> Actually, there was it's because it was never like finishing high school you know to the, to the art scene and all that uh being in mind of how the parents and the family feels about it you know their goal is to protect you and all that so i it's kind of funny i did some <laughs> mechatronics yeah i did some true uh, for vw but i could not stand it is i was introduced by a friend of my wife and um and all this jazz thing. And uh, I had a couple of people that like really saw, you know, very interesting thing through all that uh, fun um, we had in theater and all that. And uh, yeah, somebody introduced me to a company uh, and then I just went as a trainee and all that. And I was like, no man, I think I can do this for a living. I actually, you know, I love it and all that. And, but it was never a set journey. It was never going to one place or another and everything. It was just a very, very messy experience. But again, we learned from those things and then you just have to see what can you do. So, yeah, I, I will say I had a, a bit of a rough background in the art. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So really, I mean, um, just uh, beyond the background question. So really the first big theme um, I really wanted to explore in this conversation um, that certainly cuts across many of your works is the is, is the theme of movement, right? And we know, particularly yeah. in the African continent, um, that for, of course we dance for pleasure, right? We dance at groove. I see one of my students in the group in, in the group uh, in, in in attendance who studies groove, dance, and, and and nightlife and so on. But you've also um, in your work really looked at dance and, and move, not dance, sorry, but movement, um, not just as, of course, a pleasurable exercise, but as imbued with various kinds of meanings um, in it. So you've also, you've, you've been quoted as saying that, you know, in your work that you've sort of used methods of dance focused healing, right? Um, and you've continued to say that Africans are starting to interrogate some of the parts of ourselves um, with which we have been at war. And we know that the body has been central to the kinds of wars, um, and I use war critically here, that we've experienced. So you've used in your work um, movement to interrogate um, issues of place, sight, culture, and many, many others. And when I was look, preparing for this talk, I thought about what Toni Morrison says, right? Which is that Toni Morrison talks about how in Black life, um, so much of, not just dance, but also even the issues of music is also imbued with meanings around communicating a particular feeling at a particular time. Um, and so in your work, you've talked a lot around, for instance, the impact, for instance, of your Christian upbringing or coming from a Christian up household and how you draw from songs and memories um, 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 and how we use them to celebrate, um, how we use them to dance um, and also issues around hope as well. So I really wanted to, um, if you can just share with us um, how you think through the use of movement um, in your work and in its broader sense um, of the word. So a lot of the times when you think movement, you either think someone is walking or talking, but how does movement influence um, your, your, your art practices? No, oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, as I said, I came from, from that background. At that time, it was, it was, it was doing movement the specific movement that we were doing were like literally uh something new from the black families or from other families you know and um it was just me asking is there is there a way where we, we can do it in a way that anyone who doesn't have a, a history or an understanding in art can relate you know uh, i mean once you go to those country and become and all that, there was a, a less relationship between the everyday people and the art, you know, so they could not understand what's the story behind it and all that. And uh, through my research, I, I just I noticed that we as human beings, we are like, constantly performing our lives, you know, through these post-traumatic events, you know, how we react to things and to our spaces. And that was me and now putting myself as a subject to, to, to the work and 
um, trying to find those ways of how we use our our voices or our our bodies to to react or to respond to anything, and and now it has been more of how can we do that while protecting ourselves, our inner selves, and how can we deal with such subjects without creating further trauma, which is one of the things that it was um, <clears throat> it was kind of like looked back on in terms of us as as the black people um trying to go forward to using art or any other medium you know um your mic i think i can't hear you <laughs> sorry for that um i think that leads us so nicely into the second theme i really wanted to explore um in your work which is in some ways you've spoken um, quite a lot, um, but certainly have enacted it in your work, a sort of refusal to almost quote unquote perform trauma um, in your art. And it's interesting because so much of so many of the themes in your art do are influenced right by the impact of apartheid. But I think there's a certain ways in which particularly black artists are often expected to sort of um, continuously perform trauma through their work. Um, and you've written that, um, particularly in relation to your work, that you know you envision your work as assisting humans to find their voices despite their marginalization and exclusion from the public and social spaces because of their economic status, background, gender, or sexual orientation. And I was thinking about this in relation to your current work um, that is showing at the National Arts Festival, um, Um Dia Dia. Um, and this is the brief for people who might not know um, what the work is about, that this work is really inspired by collective memories um, of Black people and seeks to track historical events in Black households during South Africa's turbulent recent past as a live performance work, which includes an installation of 10 square meter hand sewed Martin cloth material and, and, and bandages. Through this work, you remember times that are spent both in welcoming and unwelcoming spaces. Can you talk about um, the sort of how you think about not just the past um, and memory, but why in your work it's so important for you to not just only focus in some ways on the traumatic events, but to also look at the ways in which um, people, and specifically in your current work on the idea, Black people um, create forms of beauty and pleasure, even in these times where there's a lot of, um, I guess, a lot of, in turmoil or trauma within their lives. I hope I'm making sense. Uh, yeah, I think uh, f for me, the process was was um, in, my, in my whole practice was to how do I present something that is so sensitive that is about us, but also it's not again, it's going to make us look weak. It's not going to make black bodies again look um, with no dignity. It was, it was just me projecting all the good or the strongest things that we have, not that ignoring the whole uh, bad that we have, but the, the trauma is there's a certain way of of fighting or of, of speaking back without losing yourself. So for me, it was it was creating this informal settlement without using the outside look, visual look. I remember I was I was traveling from the airport in Cape Town to 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 the city and uh, um, I was just curiously how uh, how people um, see the whole landscape of of the black um, informal settlements and they and for them there is a lot of I wonder how they do it but for people who are there that is is not really on their mind on their mind is like if you visit your friend for family and all that you just have fun you know all those things so for me it was like um, there's actually more what that you don't see not that we want you to see it, but there is more of us than what you think. And it was also, I didn't want it to make um, a protest kind of work or responsive to that kind of work, but it was all about creating the beauty out of what we have, which is if if we have to, if we have to speak about it more than 10 times for us to get used to it, then let it be, and this will be the beginning. So for me, when I did the idea, it was all about those memories behind that cloth you have with the family or with the relatives. And I selectively took great memories or any memory that will lift up any, um, any uh, not even South African actually, any black person, you know, cause it's the, the home dear, dear things used by other countries. So yeah, I was just very um, 
selective and very um, careful how I present or execute the work, not in a way that is still going to make black bodies look weak. Absolutely. And for people who might not know and who are, who are listening, but can you share a bit more about what exactly is Umdia Dia and how are you using it to think about um, um, both welcoming and unwelcoming spaces? Oh, okay, it's a, it's actually a term that is used in PE, right? So there's 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 like a, a, a cloth, but it's this started when I was in when I was at Great Moor in, in in Cape Town. We were just speaking about um, this promised land or going to places and all that, and how we are in these cities and you just um, find life and create life in those cities. So there was a lot of going in and out and all that. And then when I went to Zimbabwe, I found out that they actually have it. Yeah, also they use it and also in India and other places. And when I tried to speak to people who relate to it, they were like, oh, yes, most of the time, you know, the light, uh, the light lamp will be like your signal that the parents are awake or you have to go sleep early and they will be there be jolling and all that. So you could hear the sounds, you could see the, the shadows. That was a kind of a communication. And that time as a kid, you would like to be an older person to have those conversation with them. So there was a, there's a lot of memories in between that cloth. So the work is built with a marching cloth hand suit and um, it's like a, a a 20 square meter you know so there's yeah I, I really wanted to focus on on the material as i always do the kind of materials that i use cotton bandages which have kind of materials that have lived longer and kind of materials for me that open further conversations and you know there's a lot that can be done and one can relate so the idea is i was just recalling all those great memories um one have in those places Lovely, lovely. Thank you so much. And I think um, that leads us so nicely into also the theme of social inequality, right? I think even though you provide this very complex picture of how Black people's, the complexity yeah. of Black people's existence in South Africa, I don't think your work is oblivious, right, to issues of social inequality. And I think particularly yeah. your project um, around the politics of displacement is the perfect example of um, of how you engage these issues and for people who might not have seen this work um, this project really explores right the dynamics of place and the reintegration of of of, of identities um, in true where they live give a fashion it's interdisciplinary in form um, including both performance visual sound and speech and in this work um, you interrogate a lot of these dynamics around you know site place and culture and really using art as a copy and, and the ways in which we can use art as a coping me mechanism as well as a tool for social change so i guess my first question is really around why i mean there's so much that happens um, not just in south africa or the african continent yeah, um, yeah. globally as well why is this issue of displacement the, the issue that sort of resonated with you the most um, and that you wanted to look at? You could have looked at a number of sort of popular mm. things that artists do, but um, why the issue of displacement? Um, I think it was, it, was a, it was a curiosity for me from something I read about do not trust the border. Yes. And it, at that time, I was also looking just how the relationship we have with some of the southern, um, some of the southern countries and uh, South African and southern countries. It was very interesting of us shifting and through, through that concept of displacement, there's an underlying of supply and demand that is created by the system and that sometimes we leave not, not willingly because of the demand and supply and it's it's one of the aspects that we have to look at it when we when we have also have to talk about love in our families you know there was a break point where uh, one of the parents was forced about the supply and demand kind of a system and that's where the displace went on but it it it, it was my mind just got shifted when um I think I don't know where I was, but it got shifted to how I can take the same concept and put it in a more domestic, in a domestic point of view, where you can be displaced in your own home, in your own self as a body, and that's the most dangerous uh, side that will I, I kind of like ignored because when I looked at it, is that most of us are still like 
we are still in a position where we have to negotiate space with whoever we work with or whoever we stay with and all that, or with ourselves. We're now trying to be in these memories or in these visions that we think they best you know, suit us. And you being displaced, you have to reintroduce yourself every day in that manner. So there were a lot of aspects of how I can look at a displacement, but now I'm more focusing on that aspect of how one is displaced within their own body. Absolutely. And you chose a very interesting site um, for that work. Can you can you can you share a bit more about the actual process um, of how you <laughs> you look well, at Well, you mean the, the site yes. in the video or when I went to when you went to Stellenbosch? No, um, I actually did it in in in, in PE. Before, mm. I mean, okay, I did it first in in Stellenbosch as an experimental. In Stellenbosch, I was just like I responding to the Dorp Street because when the the first time like um, the way I was told this building was just specialized with good rescuings and it, the whole buildings are so wide and I was like oh wow the irony <laughs> you know like all the buildings are strictly supposed to be painted white and all that but the whole um experimental video of it I did it in PE there was a there was a space where there was an open space there and there were people who were building there so it made sense that people are finding space and they are rebuilding whatever they are building or they're running away from whatever they were running away so there's there's been a lot of um bodies trying to locate themselves in all the spaces but yeah um the, ex the Stellenbosch one it was experimental but uh, it was it was yeah it, that was I don't want to talk about the Stellenbosch one <laughs> honestly but it was it's very emotionally um something else but yeah it's it's one of those where I just did it and I was like I don't want to go back there thank you so much and then also the thing, the interesting thing also is um, is not just, of course, exploration of these issues of displacement and um, um, issues of, you know, various forms of social inequalities, but um, your, a lot of your work is also imbued by concerns with love. And you use, of course, black love specifically um, in your work. Um, and you shared, um, I found this quote where you say, I always use the concept of black love and healing as a dialogue in my practice, um, I allow the process to be an open discussion and a journey of self-discovery through sharing our stories amongst one another as encouragement. Why is also love, why is love um, so important um, in, in, in to, why is love so important that you infuse it um, throughout your work and particularly black love? Uh, uh, because, uh... I think it's 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 the concept that we as black people we we just need to work on and to exercise it as much as we can if we really want to tackle other things um not just loving somebody else love loving the space that you're in the environment that you're in and uh, and you you know when you know when you come from a space where people that are closer to you giving so much love in any way you you become in a position where you can think and and that's the most important thing is that is giving a child um, a gift of free will that's like the best gift ever because now you created this place but also you didn't say to this place how to do it now she or he will understand the responsibility or how it feels to ex fully express yourself and she he will be able to come and communicate with you in issues about sexuality about about finance about anything so i feel like it is the base and as much as it's kind of like a foreign concept but it's not something that is not there it is there you know as i say that the issues around around um demand and supply took it away in some way and that's when i used um i used the bandages and a cotton because when somebody is having a bandage on them you you kind of position yourself in a in a way that you want to ask him are you okay so now there's that careness in you just comes out just because you see somebody with the bandage you know so it that for me that material i use it as an alarm how constantly we we need to um position ourselves towards one another in terms of carrying the space and carrying the people and all that so yeah the the the, the concept of love it does um the, my materials that i use does have a relationship with the concept of love thank you um i just have two more themes and then we're gonna open um to discussion because i know there's quite a lot of people 
um, who know your work and who, who, who would like to an opportunity to engage you on it. But you also speak a lot around this concept of internal healings, right? So not just black love, but um, the concept of um, almost using love um, as a form of healing. And I think a lot of the times when we talk about healing in South Africa, it's often um, very individualized, right? Not, not sorry, not individualized, but very structural. So we need to heal gender-based violence. We need to heal this. But why is it important that this love not just be, you know, always in extension to someone else or to something else? Why is it internal, um, specifically in your work on or how you think about it for you? Okay. Um. Again, we 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 going back in that in that in. You know how how one gains themselves or there's a lot of things that we we did wrong not we did wrong but we use wrong equipments to build or to fight which is as something that we need to just need to go back and and just try and and, and fix it is you how I'm gonna say it visually it's like bringing a a furniture or wearing new clothes while you're dirty, you know. So there's, you just have to clean the room and make sure you spring clean it before you do all that, you know, before you still go outside to the outside and present yourself or try to deal with other issues. So the, that is that is how I, I see healing and all that. And, and it, it actually started from, from me personally because there was a lot of things also I was fighting as an artist. There was a lot of, um, uh, of time I was trying to just ask questions and all those things that are so much confusion. But at that time, I forgot of I forgot to make art, and I become focused about other things, which which they really do not matter. Maybe at that time they do look to such an agency, but I invested time on actual making work and just avoiding a lot of things and and just telling myself that whatever thing will see me there. So the quality and the concentration was more on the work. So that can also be done by any individual focusing on you than anything else. Um, I mean, that's how you actually um, put a city in dignity, you know. The, it has to come within you first before it's projected somebody else, you know, because if you're going out there and trying to get whatever attention, you exhausting yourself while you're doing that. So that's why the whole um, subject of healing initially, I started with it before I, I made other works. Thank you. And then I guess my last question or the last theme is really around future directions, right, in your work. Um, you've said in the past that you wish uh, for your work to act as an inspiration to people, um, for people to be able to find hope, courage and healing and to be able to provide a platform that enables people to share deep feelings without violating their sense of self or exposing them to further trauma. Um, but in what direction do you see your work? Um, going um, in the future. And just before you respond, can I just say people um, in the chat, uh, feel free to raise your hand. Um, and then um, after Wesley has responded, we're gonna go into, into Q&A. Oh, um, I recently did a work in, uh, in Cape Town. It we be great to inform you. I had that work um, four years ago. But at that time, it was just too heavy, and I put it in my archives, right? And uh, and also, that's a gift, knowing when to present work or not. Because if I did at that time, it was going to come up wrong. And now, when I did it, it was not about, you know how performance art it is, it must be the visuals and everything. I wasn't focusing on really on the visuals. I wasn't focusing on the sound. I wasn't focusing on the costume. It was just those written moments and not even saying that I'm protesting on this statement, we regret to inform you, but through all that writing and all that changing technique of writing and emotionally exhausting, uh, I was making sense of the statement and saying that I'm not running away from the, the lie in the house. I'm actually able to face it. And the most important thing is how do I respond when such things come? So it's all about the human behavior and um, I envision a work on on how we respond to whatever issues we're going through. To you know, you can, can, uh, I'm not trying to say this is how we should be treated or this is how things should be. I'm saying whatever it is that is presented in everyone's uh, um, face, how you respond to it is very important. You know, 
where you give you you, you keep your um your focus also says a lot about your future and all that and uh yeah so um when it comes to the future and the work is i i hope the I'm, I'm making work now that i would like to still have a conversation about in the next 10 years and that uh, deals with a lot of patience as an artist and we know how um things are and sometimes people try to measure the the quality of the work according to the social media reception which is very dangerous i think um yeah i'm just taking time and making work that will just create further conversations in the next 10 20 years and um i just don't like the entry of boom this is the work everybody uh, my work seeks for consent so when you're ready whenever you feel like you are ready and then you can have any kind of relationship with the work so it's it's that's how i i envision the work to just want to see good things about themselves and their surroundings whenever they're ready not that simple now whenever you're ready yeah. fantastic um okay um are there any questions from people on the floor I guess no questions. <laughs> <laughs> I guess um, whilst we're waiting for people, um, is there anything important that um, I should have asked or that you want to highlight in the meantime um, or that you want to reflect on that we didn't discuss that you think is important to think about or that you are thinking through at the, at, at the moment? I think is 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 how we um we are looked at as as a performance artist or as just artists generally. There's there's expectations and these boundaries that have been created, and then when you create some kind of work, um, there is, people are very there's people want new, and when new is introduced, still you know. There is a problem with that and also i think it's because of the expectations and how you expect it to fall in this category and then when you do that work and there's not even um a, a yard where one just try wants to try and learn about it what is new i think that's that's the gift it's just that people just need to just need to welcome themselves in learning on something new just engaging on something new and and the boundaries is 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 what sometimes uh, hold us back as some of the South African performance artists because there's been a lot of expectations or because of what is on what what is on reception right now and everybody thinks that's how things should have been done. I mean, um, it's a good thing that we do things differently. I mean, you know, that's the beauty of it. People looking at probably the same subjects in the different ways. And that's just one thing we need to treasure, you know. Yeah. Your mic is off. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Um, I think it's also interesting. So in this COVID context, right, there's been two primary ways in which people have been speaking about artists. The first one is that, you know, people are really, really grateful to artists because artists have been holding poetry spaces online. Um, we've been listening to music. Um, we've had all of these benefits that have allowed us to cope with this particular The impact moment. of it, you see? Yes, but there's also the other side, which is the ways in which um, artists have really struggled in this moment and have not had, particularly in the South African context, structural support um, in the ways in which, for instance, other professions have had. How do you think, um, first of all, what is your reflection on the impact of COVID right now um, on artistry, particularly in your field of performance film? and installation, but also um, how do you see this moment as influencing or as how, how do you think this impact, this moment will sort of impact the post-COVID-19 context or world? It's, it's frustrating, eh? It's, it, it, it's frustrating um, because a lot of things are on hold, are being disturbed, but if there's any beauty, if you ask me, is it's it's something that just came for like at once everyone is like how do i adjust or how do i find ways and which now challenges your you as an artist and all that but again that has a lot of limitations 
um, because some people don't have internet, some people don't have equipment. So, you know, again, also you have to ask yourself, how, what can I do to what I have? So there's been a lot of, um, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of, of shifting in quality and frustration and losing a lot of things. Hence, we regret to inform you. But again, the question, so what do you do as an individual, as an artist? You know, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're back to on the floor. Um, does, feel free to just, um, okay, um, we have one hand, but let's see if we can take a few more. Um, all right, uh, Esikia, over to you. Thank you, Doc. Hi, everyone. Hi, Wazile. And thank Hi. you for this presentation. I would like to pick your brain on something, and I know it's something that's quite broad. Um, I, I am looking at the themes that you guys um, wanted to cover on the poster, which are really themes on displacement, memory, love, and dignity broadly, right? And I, I wonder, Wesley, what for you, what the future of love looks like in this country, what the shortcomings of that imagined future of love looks like, but also what does collective placement looks like when we've dealt with the displacement? Thank you. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, I think it's that uh, line of the the future is giving, is, is the gift of free will. That That is it. If, if we can um, do that, because the gift of free will comes by from, from family. So now they're not gonna question every, action or anything instead they will support you you know uh people that are very close to you they have a very strong influence or, or where you land you know and uh, and giving that um free will to be the best version of yourselves that's that's where it starts love in any kind of aspects you know because some of us started at the age of probably 21 or 26 to really freely um to be in this space where you can even say something back or whatever but when you were when you were almost somewhere you could not you know some people wanted to probably do um engineering or designing all that but at home you know there's this specific thing no why are you sons and why are you sons and you know and all these questions we need to be collectively responsible that we participate in all that you cannot look at someone who's 34 years old it's like um this person is just so um bad or abusive or it started when probably he was left there was there was a lot of doors that were locked for him to not fully express himself so the only thing that was around him was anger and that's the only thing that he knows so um for the future is us we are responsible now to just um give this uh free will to the young ones and so that they can be the best version of themselves. Uh, Lovely. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Oh, there's a hand. Okay. Uh, Pilani? Um, thank you, uh, Wesley, for that um, enriching discussion, discussion about your work. Um, I want to find out from you, um, I mean, what I've gathered is that um, your work touches a lot on contemporary issues facing particularly um, Black people. Um, so my question is around um, accessibility and particularly in relation to your work because um, I think it could be really um, fruitful um, to be able to share the work with um, people who are often most affected because I find that with contemporary art um, the themes and discussions around it never quite uh, make it back, not just in contemporary art, actually even in academia is the same thing, never quite make it back to the people who can best benefit or even be enriched by, um, um, by some of the themes that your work uh, tackles. So I guess my question is what have you done or what do you do in your work to sort of um, ensure um, that it, it it comes into action, contact and communication with um, those who are most affected. Oh, wow. Yeah, 
okay that's a good question um i think yeah 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 the reality is sometimes yeah your work becomes in spaces where um the people that you're probably advocating for or you have a voice for they not they they can reach it but what what i have done is through the research i i i spend more time learning and being those with those people and in and also in the process of making the work you know uh give them a chance to participate in that you know because i know in the future they might not be able to experience the work there but also before the work goes there it is close to them there's kind of like i have these experimental things where it's just the work with the people that we're part of so they could say even if it's somewhere I've seen the first showing of it, although it was not really public, but they, they have this sense of pride that I was part of making it or I was there when it was being experimented. So that's, it's it's like a, a VIP view kind of thing. <laughs> I know, but because the reality is um, contemporary, these ads, big ad spaces are away from people and access. So what can you do is is to give them the, the front row of experiment of, of, of of them to experiment the whole process of it and the whole journey of it, you know. So when it goes out there, they can also feel proud that they are part of it. So um, yeah, and uh, trying to bring it back to 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 the people is uh, is something that I want to do, but I don't want to do it out of empathy. You know, I don't wanna. I don't like making work out of empathy or just bringing something to somebody out of empathy because they I need to respect them enough you know it's the same the same respect I gave into those people the other people I need to give them the same one you know reception so yeah I think I kind of makes sense I don't know <laughs> thank you okay I uh, will go to Kathy so and then if there's any last burning comments uh please feel free to raise your hands and then um we'll close after that Hello. So um, I don't know if Tobani has told me, but I've become a bit of a fan of your work because of, you know, my own research, you know, on black life. And uh, I like it. Uh, I'm really interested in this whole notion of really affording black people sort of like um, what I've come to call a full life, right? not necessarily only as bodies, you know, that experience trauma and violence, but also as bodies that experience intimacy, love, happiness, you know, and all those things. And, uh, but uh, uh, I want to talk about this sort of like idea of the archive, right? So I usually ask myself this question, whose archive, you know, is it, in, you know, so, and then, and then for me, I think I'm trying to think with this, with sort of like what Jacob Jamine writes about in his book, right? In which he sort of like reflects on apartheid nostalgia, especially, you know, about, you know, families that live in townships and about how they, they were, there were moments, through, you know, throughout that sort of like, you know, violence and apartheid and all those things, but there were, moments of warmth and joy, you know. So I think my question would be, is this sort of like your work a way of reviving an archive, you know, mm, you know, yeah. whether it's contemporarily or, you know, mm, in the past, yeah. but yeah. Actually, come to think of it, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. Because we, we, we do have our archives, which, I mean, those people before they did great job of narrating the whole bad things that happened to us. And I was actually thinking the other day, who gets married and have kids and family while there's a war right on your doorstep? What kind of hope do you have, you know? And which is which is one of the one of the strongest beliefs because at that time it was so difficult, but our parents would still have hope that, you know, I can have children and family and start a family through all that. And uh, I think it's one of the um, things that we really need to, there's a lot of things that we need to archive that are great happen underneath, you know, and the danger of the of the media or reporters, um, they, they can tell you what happened, but they cannot tell you the other side of the story. So as I'm trying to look at all these parts that when you look back, you will feel good, you know, about 
the family or about yourself as a human being or as a part of a black person and and not romanticizing your, your poverty or anything bad about you, you know, not that you're ignoring it, but now it's time for us to archive all those little moments, you know, when you're visiting your grandmother and you buy four or six from Madras. It's so much fun, you know, because now if you talk about it, anyone's like, yo, actually, how did we do it? But at that time, we were just having so much fun seeing your cousin. So I think that's one of the aspects here. We just need to properly archive them, revisit them and like constantly talk about them, see the beauty in any in, in, in anything that happened there. Like it's it's very important for us, for our growth, for whatever we want to build. Lovely, thank you. Uh, Tulani? Uh, Tulani, I saw your hand. Is the mic off? <laughs> awesome. um, your mic is not on, um, Tulani. Yeah, they they forgot to switch on mic. Uh, Tulani? Oh yeah, you're unmuted now. Who, can I go? No? Uh, Tulani first. Oh, um, I think it's. Um, I think it's reconnecting. But in that time, uh, Pilani, you can go. Jeez, uh, Wesley, that just sent chills down my spine. Who gets married or loves when there's a war at the doorstep? Know? Wow, <laughs> wow. I'm quoting that. Um, uh, just to to piggyback off what um Kachiso just said, um. This triggered uh, ideas around legacy for me, and um, I've noticed that um, amongst contemporary sort of uh, artists across the board, whether it be um, hip hop or visual artists, there's somewhat an underlying obsession with um, creating a legacy. When, in my opinion, they have not put in the kind of work that um, people whom we know to have left some kind of legacy uh, uh, did. But also, um, I don't know what your thoughts around ideas of legacy because this theme, I think, is, is being fed to us so that you need to be thinking about um, what kind of legacy you're going to leave behind. But my thinking is that anybody who's ever made any kinds of uh, great strides for society, they did it not because they were preoccupied with what kind of legacy they were going to leave behind. What are your take uh, in relation to your work? Are you thinking about um, uh, legacy at all? <laughs> I don't know if you can call it legacy, but for me is the ability for one to to reimagine themselves in spaces where they they thought they could never be, in. and while in those spaces, um, plant possibilities and just awareness that you can be anything. The possibilities, you know, endless. Um, that idea of a, the gift of free will, you know, it's it's that because when you get that free will, it can be anything. So it's just for me, one, see the work and able to have a conversation in any manner, you know, in any way, it's open in any way. So for me, is 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 that it's it's just um, the work still have some sense on relevant in the next 10, 20 years. And it's not about me, but it's actually about the work and how you relate to it or where do you see it fits in your life so if yeah <laughs> if that's it relates to legacy i don't know <laughs> okay um let's just wait for tulani because he had his hand up and i'm not quite sure um he's just reconnecting so if we can just give him a few seconds to to come back This was a great talk, by the way, guys. Lovely. And a lovely start to the semester. 
of Heart Anthropology Thursday Talks, Tomani. So looking forward to the rest of the semester. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we can't seem to get um, Tulani back. So if there are no other questions, um, I would want you to close us off um, with Zile, with just an overall reflection, um, um, as Essie's question was hinting at, um, how you are thinking about these broad themes and what you want, what's the big takeaway um, that you want us to, to, to get and in thinking about um, displacement, memory, love and dignity, uh, particularly through your work. Um, what is it that you actually want um, us to get whenever we buy a painting or we attend an installation or we watch a film? Um, what are you trying to um, communicate to us? And, and you can use that as a way to sort of um, close us um, from the session. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, um, but just before you get that, uh, you get to that, sorry to cut you, um, Tulani is back now. So Tulani, you can ask your question before we close so that you have an opportunity. Um, hi, everyone. I had Fantastic, we can hear you. Sure. Um, um, Wazide, I like the whole notion of Utiatia, and I think this is specifically in relation to my research. And um, so I've been doing a field work um, recently in the past few weeks. And one of the narratives that sort of came out was how fathers are unwilling to open the platform, the negotiation platform with their kids. And, and, and um, getting to understand what the idea is um, in today's session, I sort of like understood um, how it is deeply entrenched in our daily lives as, as, as Blacks, because I like the fact that you use it in a materialistic manner, but um, that sort of um, um, allowed me to, to widen my horizon in terms of how to make sense of it and how deeply entrenched it, it, it is in our daily lives as, as Black um, people, right? So mm. what I'm trying to say is that um, I, I think it has it is deeply entrenched in our daily lives to an extent that fathers are not willing to create this uh, liaison platform with their kids. And it's not really only in a materialistic fashion, but also mm. it is mostly culturally entrenched. So mm. um, I'm, I'm very excited about this and I You've done a great work, and I like how it sort of intersects with this whole uh, theme of displacement, love, and and dignity, right? And I'm I'm looking forward to exploit further for my own analysis. So this is more of a comment, and I I really thank uh, and appreciate your work. Thanks. Mm. Uh, uh, thank you. That's that's good. Actually, you you, you just say that about the father and the. Um... And the child thing there is there is an element of boundary if you look at um, the idea how the outside looks at it and how the inside how the person is inside there is there is an element of boundary which was there even at home where is there was no much of communication between the parent and the child because the father i think that's the way it kind of be Again, the father had a responsibility of wake up at five or four to leave and come back later on. So now in a point of how do I really engage with this person that I hardly see, you know, on an everyday and all that. So this is so foreign for me that I'm, you know, so there is a, there is kind of a miscommunication or, or a conversation that the other person is trying to say, hence the constant keep on gestures on the performance and the other person on the other side, how he looks at it. So yeah, I think there are two both sides between um, the family or the parents and the child. And that is also one of our issues that we're dealing with now uh, because the child cannot be fully themselves in any way, academically or in any way, because the, the conversation or the relationship is just foreign for anyone to just sit at home and say how they really feel about something and getting full support from the family. Thank you. You can also respond then to my question and, and, and use that to close us off. <laughs> oh, you, you, well, your question was um, what again? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what do you want us to get um, from your work? Um, if we were to get whether one thing or a couple of things or 
Um, what are you communicating um, through your work, particularly around displacement, memory, love and dignity? I guess this links, this is me really paraphrasing essentially to sort of close us um, in this session around, you know, what do you, what do you want to say through your work? I think, I think the first thing that I want to, to, to people to get that it's, um, get it into your mind that black artists can do abstract or any kind of work and you as a positive man as a black person you are invited in those spaces that to explore and see engage let it be our everyday thing that we can tackle infrastructure we can tackle architecture environmental landscape things let not be seen as a foreign subject and the only thing that is known from us is is a ritual performance because that's how the system, you know, that we have the minds, even not even art in academic to write about way different things, just just and just write about our own black trauma, which is like something that they always wanted to celebrate it as if if we write about something else, it's like, mm, what are you doing, you know? So it's 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 first thing is that that um expect the and anything and just bring your yourself with, with an open page to learn and of course to forgive some very difficult realities about yourself which is that's what i'm 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 trying to do yeah i couldn't have said it uh, better i think um the soon to be dr himali i'm putting pressure on you <laughs> captured it uh with that um we think we find your work really thought provoking and so thank you so much for the time you've given this afternoon to think with us around these really important issues that your work um, confronts. Um, KG has put some links on the chat um, around where people can watch your latest show. We're also going to share it on the various platforms for Gauteng Anthropology. But from my side, I want to say thank you so much, um, not just to you, but to everyone who came. Um, I think we nearly, people came in and out, but we had about 20 people at the peak. So that's really like a good attendance for an, a virtual event like this. So, and we will put this up on our YouTube channel for people who've missed it and send it to, to the circulars. But thank you so much, um, everyone. Have a great, um, as I always say, uh, Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you.